The holidays are here, and as always, it's a time filled with friends, family, good food, and a guy wearing a mask carrying an axe. Wait a minute. Are you telling me there's a horror movie about Thanksgiving? Why, yes, dang it, there is. What is up, my friends? Happy Thanksgiving to you, and welcome back to Jones Vibes. Hit the like button if you're the one responsible for the turkey this year, and let's dive in. And today we are talking about the brand new slasher film directed by Eli Roth, Thanksgiving. But right off the top, I do want to let you know that this is mainly going to be a spoiler-free review. I might get into some spoilers later on in the video, but I'll be sure to warn you before I do. But the synopsis of this movie reads, an axe-wielding maniac terrorizes residents of Plymouth, Massachusetts, after a Black Friday riot ends in tragedy. Picking off victims one by one, the seemingly random revenge killings soon become part of a larger, sinister plan. And this is a movie that really just took me by surprise. I remember hearing rumblings about it maybe the end of last year and early this year, just hearing how Eli Roth is making this horror film about Thanksgiving with Addison Rae. And so I was curious about it, and I think one of the most fun Easter eggs surrounding this entire thing is that if you're a fan of the movie Grindhouse, Eli Roth actually featured a horror movie Thanksgiving in one of the fictitious trailers in that movie. And so now he has created this full-length feature film about this slasher guy running around at Thanksgiving. And I do want to say that I really just think that this premise is so good because Thanksgiving just doesn't have like a horror movie. If I'm forgetting one, please let me know down in the comments, but I can't think of one. And it's just perfect because Thanksgiving is that time of year where like, you know, in a lot of communities, there's a lot of kids that have like left for college and they're coming back for the first time seeing their family. Families, the community is packed and everybody's just happy, like celebrating being around family and friends, eating good food and just having a good time. But the tie into this movie to Black Friday, another staple that's tied to Thanksgiving and there's a massacre in the beginning of this movie that like leaves its mark on this community and haunts it forever. Like I found that absolutely hilarious. And really just my first reaction to this movie walking out of the theater, there hasn't been a movie this year that has made me smile from ear to ear. Like I was grinning walking outside because I had so much fun. The performances were great. The kills were brutal and creative, but not over the top, which I was kind of expecting for Eli Roth. But aside from that, he's a director that really pushes the boundaries. He's a very talented director. He's also an actor, you know, you might know him from Inglorious Bastards, but seeing him get his own project, have creative freedom and write this story based off of something that he had done in the past, clearly an idea that he had had it's just a beautiful thing, man. The film stars an actress named Nell Verlack. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but she plays Jessica Wright, whose father Thomas owns this store. The superstore that the Black Friday Massacre took place in. And then you have Patrick Dempsey. Scream fans out there show some love. It's great to see him back in the horror genre. But he plays the sheriff. And then you have kind of just all of these side characters. And everybody did a great job. The one that I will mention, obviously, is Addison Ray. Me being a guy that was born in the 90s, I kind of missed the whole Addison Ray thing, but my wife and I actually did watch the sequel, or if you even call it that, to She's All That. We watched He's All That, and she is the main girl in that, and I thought she was pretty good, actually. That movie was kind of good, <laughs> but I know that she has a lot of fans out there, and so I'm sure people are excited to see her in this movie. She actually didn't have the biggest role. She was more of a side character, and surprisingly, it was Nell playing Jessica Wright, but I think the star of the show for me really was the humor. I saw that show up almost Almost immediately when one of my favorite comedians Tim Dillon shows up and I was just like dude Tim Dillon the writing was absolutely hilarious and maybe it wasn't as witty as like the Scream franchise is but there were things that very much reminded me of it you'd be in the middle of a very tense chase scene there'd be jump scares happening and you'd be like whoa what's going on but then all of a sudden something would happen that would have you cracking up I love that for this movie and it made for the type of experience that makes you want a franchise out of this if I could go to another installment of this every single single Thanksgiving, I totally would, like if they kept this going. But I feel like the magic really is with Eli Roth. He knew what he was doing. He knew the story that he wanted to tell. It's cheesy, it's campy, but it knows exactly what it wants to be. You have all these teenage actors that are just giving 110% massive performances, but having the time of their life, clearly. And on the other side of things, you have this John Carver character, this new slasher wearing a big, tall pilgrim hat with a John Carver mask on. And there's shots of him like, sharpening his axe. It's great to see a new slasher with a new style weapon. And as he approaches characters, he's different. You know, he's not like the shape. He's not like Ghostface, who's kind of clumsy and running around. He's very strategic and agile. He's not like a ninja by any means, but he's pretty good at maneuvering his way around. And so 
I found that very interesting. The chase scenes were pretty enthralling, but the movie itself didn't spend a whole lot of time on anything. Like there were these characters, there's the Jessica girl and she's having this boy drama. And so we're introduced to all of these pieces, but it very much to me felt like I know what you did last summer. I think that's the closest connection that I can make. Like I said, there were things that reminded me of Scream, but I know what you did last summer was such a staple in the 90s and it was so unique. It's just like this guy in a raincoat with a hook who's coming for you. There wasn't that much more to it. And this Thanksgiving movie is very much like that. There was even a scene in this movie where a couple characters are on a float in the middle of a parade. They're out in public. And I love that type of thing in horror movies. And it reminded me of I Know What You Did Last Summer and Sarah Michelle Gellar standing standing on stage watching Ryan Phillippe in the balcony. Like I said, I don't think that I expected to have nearly as much fun as I did, and I came out just happy as can be, and I really hope that more installments to this franchise are on the way, because John Carver is him. But as always, I do want to give my Jones Vibe star rating based purely off of my enjoyment level. I'm not a critic by any means, I just enjoy going to movies and watching them. So, as for Thanksgiving, I'm giving this movie four and a half out of five stars. It was such a good movie, and I I can't wait to see it again. I want to have seconds. But now I do want to take a second and talk about a couple spoilers. So if you haven't seen this movie, it would be a good idea to check out now. Okay, so the third act of this movie, did it work? I think the execution was well done. For me, it's just who was under the mask. It's something that I think... I'll just have to get used to re-watching it. And also, I feel like maybe it was so familiar because Scream 6 just had the cop being the killer in the end. But as far as Patrick Dempsey goes, it was a lot of fun just seeing him getting to like raise hell in the end and go completely psycho. It was awesome. As far as the motive, um, <laughs> I don't know, like the Wright Mart massacre was cheesy as all hell. So like trying to connect the dots of her dying in that massacre and him going crazy. I don't know. Like, I don't know if it worked for me or not, but I just accepted it and I decided to have a great time with it. And like I said, Patrick Dempsey was really, really solid in the end, but he does survive. They're like, nothing could have survived that fire. But I mean, come on, obviously he survived the fire. Hell, even a turkey could survive that. Am I right? But then the only other real spoiler I wanted to talk about is just like some of these kills, like specifically the girl like how could I not think that in a horror movie about Thanksgiving they weren't gonna cook a human and make them the turkey on the table that was just un freaking believable and scary as all hell and just brutal but perfect for this movie I thought that was amazing and then like everything else like the Tim Dillon death scene there was just so much excitement to be had in this movie as a horror fan the movie finished and I just wanted more so yeah guys that was Thanksgiving and happy Thanksgiving as always please let me know all of your guys thoughts down in the comments if you saw this movie I would love to hear what you thought about it because sometimes I just like rant and rave about things that I get excited about but maybe this movie wasn't that great maybe it actually was really great who knows please start the discussion down below and also so if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I'd really appreciate that support. It means more than you know. If you want to keep up with me on X, I'm at Jones Vibes only. And don't forget to keep up the good vibes, guys. But that's it for today, everyone. Dinner's actually almost ready, so I gotta get going.